Hi, I'm Kathy Hester of PlantBasedInstantPot.com and HealthySlowCooking.com and I'm glad that you're ready to leap into live video because I've got a great thing to show you today. So what I'm going to show you today is not necessarily how to make a recipe, which is what I usually would do, though we'll do something similar to show you the process, but we're really here to learn about how you can do a live demo on video being one person, just a one person team. And that's how I do it all the time. So I have a friend who does TV. And so in TV world, like right now, I I'm using two cameras. We'll see a couple of other cameras I'll show you, but two cameras, a straightforward camera and an overhead camera. Well, when my friend Virginia goes into the studio, she might have four camera people following her around, taking care of all of it, switching the different shots. Lighting would be changed, so I have the lighting set up. I have my camera set up in front of me, my camera set overhead, and then I'm pretty much ready to go. So the hard part you think is to switch between the cameras, right? So are we doing this in editing? And editing just makes me break out in hives. So I'm very much a live video person. I would rather just be here, do it, make some mistakes, learn together and move along with things than to like meticulously edit something. So this is what really helps me and it's Ecamm software that's for uh, the Mac is what saves me and what makes this a one person team possibility. And so I'm going to show you a few things both on this side of the world and on where you can see in Ecamm how I'm going to switch things. But for right now, and you can see my computer, so I am looking in my computer as you're going to in a few minutes so that I can see Ecamm and I'm literally going to click a button and now I have overhead camera. Hello, right? And because I'm using my laptop, this is just my laptop video cam, right? That's just built in. So I have that. I don't have to use it, but if you weren't ready to have a camera in front and a camera overhead, you can still have more than one camera. I'm also gonna use my phone that's hooked up to show you um, kind of how the outside out there setup is. And so right now I have four cameras. And, um, and actually this will look weird, but I'll go ahead and see if I can slide this over. So you can see, in addition to seeing I'm a Harry Potter fan, <laughs> uh, you can see my Sony 7R2 right there. And so that's the camera that's coming to get in front of me. So that's the camera you're seeing right now, okay? And then this overhead camera, we're just gonna kind of move this a little bit, it's right there, okay? And then you can kind of see I have some lights out there. Okay, but even without knowing what I'm doing over here, it's not really distracting for me to switch from one to the other. and you certainly can do demos with one camera. Depending on what it is, it can be hard just doing, like you can see a lot of things here. I can move the camera back further and you could see even more of this counter. So when I'm doing classes, I have the camera farther back or you could use um, a different distance lens. So, but if I'm here and this is all I have, this is a little harder. I have to get re, you know, if I got far back and I angled it down, you could see something. So I like, I could cook in my air fryer or something like that. And actually, let's just go ahead and see what you're not supposed to be seeing. So I could be like, and then you just pull the basket out and blah, blah, blah. So even if you're just using your laptop right now, you can still do this. Okay. So, and I'm going to adjust it to make it a little easier for me to see. Um, you can also use your iPhone as an input device. And so I believe it's, there's a program that you can use for that. And that's what I'm using. Um, so even if you just had your iPhone and your laptop camera, 
that's one thing that you could do, okay? Depending on what you're doing though, an overhead view changes it from something you see in passing to something that grabs your attention a little bit more. It's easier to teach. So like if I'm saying to do this, right? To roll the onion, or roll the onion, roll the lemon to make the juice easier to get out by bursting the pulp a little bit. So there's this way, and then there's the overhead way, and this way. And that just seems a little more dynamic to me than this, right? And so some of it you are going to be looking for what action is happening. And so one of the things that at first was a little weird for me is sometimes me talking is the action, right? So I could have this beautiful little lemon set up right here and I could just talk and I could tell you about lemons and the history of lemons and all these different things and it's just like watching paint dry. Whereas at least if I'm telling you about lemons and that yes, that's a pink lemon and this is a yellow lemon and this is this and that and the other, I'm moving. So I am the action. And just realize, especially like sometimes if you're knitting or doing maybe some kind of painting, sometimes you're showing what that is, but sometimes you're kind of, you're stepping back and you're like, before I show you these three blue paints, let's talk a little bit about how I made them or maybe the color theory. So that might come back or maybe you have something that's perfect to show color theory that's laid out there, right? Um, you want to try and be as dynamic as you can within the parameters. So if you are talking, I don't know about a coin collection and you're showing a coin collection, there may not be a lot of movement, but maybe what you can do is kind of move them along a little bit, change something going on to give it a little bit of oomph. Now, we should also talk about why doing live demos is a cool thing to do. <laughs> For me, as um, a food blogger and cookbook author, it's amazing because people can see my recipes, they can see the photos of the food, and they still don't know the ins and outs necessarily. Like, I probably said, you know, hit the, <laughs> hit the lemon on the counter and, and roll it. But seeing it and hearing it hit the counter, that puts something in somebody's brain that they're gonna remember that, okay? Um, if I say how to, I don't know, use an Instant Pot, how to let the steam out of an Instant Pot, that's something that people know about, they've heard about, but seeing it, and seeing somebody do it is really a game changer for if they can be comfortable doing it or not. I know that if I'm doing crafts and my friend um, Dawn Meisch is an artist, so when I have to see her steps to understand what's going on, I'm, I'm not an artist, so therefore I don't know how it works. And seeing those steps really helps. And she also uses two camera setup because it just makes it easier to educate your audience. Um, and so let me show you, I'm gonna sh show you from this side so you can see I'm going into live demo mode in Ecamm and I'll talk to you this way <laughs> since I'm looking this way right now. Um, so you can see a lot of the different things that are here, right? Um, you can see all the cameras and here I'll move move that so it's less distracting. Okay, so that's my phone camera, and that's just kind of unfocused over there. There's my overhead camera, there's my straightforward camera. And each one of those, as you're doing a demo, except for this guy, you don't have to know where this one is. This is when you get a break. This is when you need to take a drink of water, or you need to scratch your nose, or any of those things, because you get a minute off camera, right? But for switching from this camera, to this camera, then I need to acknowledge you and be on this one. So you could theoretically have one in front, one off to the side, you could do different angles, and depending on what you're trying to do, if I want to be the focus the whole time, or if maybe I just wanted you to see something from the side, right? 
So that's one thing that's super important and nice. And you can tell that this camera is a much nicer camera than the one on my laptop. But also something that's cool that Ecamm does, and that's this camera effect menu, and this is per what you have chosen. So kind of look here for a second, and then I'm gonna click it, see how it moved? So we've done different things for the different cameras. So one is one way, one is another way. And let me show you, so the brightness, right now the sun is coming in right from that window there. So maybe I wanna take some of the brightness off make it a little darker, right? Whereas here, if I make it dark, it's a little too dark because the light isn't coming as much on that. So I can change the brightness. I can change the temperature. So from cold to warm. So you can always think going towards cool gives you bluer tones and gives you more like golden tones and the tint can go from a little pinker to a little greener. You can do saturation. So see how that's super oversaturated lemon right there. <laughs> but, you know, we don't want it to look like it's in grays either. So sometimes you might need to change that a little bit. You can also reset all this. So if we reset it, now it's back exactly where it started with. Okay, so you can play with it and it's not the end of the world. You can also change the camera to mirror, should you want to. And you can zoom. So we can zoom in and we can pan out. Obviously, at some point, you're panning out a little bit too far. So you want to keep it around in there. But we could go in a little bit more. So if I wanted to, let's see, let me get a something like that. We could go in a little bit more. I could come over here. I can zoom in, which I don't really want to do. But so if I, if I didn't want to go to that first camera, but I wanted you to pay attention to what I was saying, I could do this, right? I could zoom in. Typically, I don't zoom in because I'm trying to make people feel like they're here with me in my kitchen, right? So if they don't get to see all my mess in the kitchen, it's not gonna feel the same way. It's not gonna feel like they're, they're on the other side of this counter. And that's what I want you to feel like. I want you to feel like, oh, I've been invited into her kitchen and now we're gonna make some lemonade, right? And so that's one of the reasons I keep it like this. So let me get it back so you can see all the goodies over here. Um, okay, double checking, I saw that and it made me a little nervous. Okay, so if I was gonna make this lemonade, we'll talk, so I need to decide what the action part is with squeezing this lemon. And here you can see a lot. So maybe I'll move the glass closer so you can see the full glass. Whereas if we were here, I would move it here. But all you're going to see is this. This is going to block anything that's going to happen. So I say, let's pull this back. And you're going to see the juice squeeze in. Right? It's not the most exciting thing in the whole world, but it's action. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and put some simple syrup in. And this, I think this kind of pouring action from here can be kind of nice. Um, we can look overhead, and this is something that you can try. See, you see it, but it's not as dynamic. This just looks more like, oh, look. Where did that simple syrup come from? Now, with stirring, you can do it this way, but stirring can be kind of dynamic above, as long as you give your hand kind of out of the way. Okay, so I'm going to change cameras by clicking so I can taste it. Ooh, that's just the right amount of simple syrup for me. I like it. So now I'm going to pour a little bit of water in here. Okay. I'm going to stir that up. 
and I could stir it up this way. There's a little more to see. Or we can switch cameras and see how easy that is to switch back and forth. And I'm going to put in ice here first, and we can look at it both ways. So I'm just going to put some tablespoons of ice. And because it's moving around, it's a little bit interesting to watch that way. I don't know that it's that interesting here. And so this is how you would make some of those choices. Right? And then we'll stir everything up together. Go back to the camera for the big reveal, which if it's food is always tasting the final product, right? Mm, that's refreshing, right? So what I want you to notice while you've been looking at the Ecamm screen is did you see just how ridiculously easy it is for me to go from one thing to another camera to another camera? Now, I also want you to realize that some days you're going to turn on one camera before the other and it might switch around, but it's easily fixed and it's not a big deal if you click on the wrong camera. Because except for this demo, I wouldn't have my iPhone just kind of hanging out pointed to nowhere, right? I always have a camera where I want it to be. Even if I accidentally clicked on this and I wasn't expecting to, I could suddenly be here. And the most important thing, if you're switching cameras that are going to come straight on, again, is that you don't look at yourself like I'm doing right now. You look at, if you're on your laptop, it's the light. If you're on your iPhone, you know, there's a little place. I know where to look at the Sony. As you get new cameras, you may have to learn to look a little bit differently. So it's a little bit different doing live video demos or like live Facebook demos or um, Instagram, YouTube, any of those than having in person. So I tape all of my live, uh, all of my online classes, I tape live. And I do that so I'll have an audience that can go back and forth with me. And I'm going to put this out demo mode for a minute while we talk about some of these other things. So the reason I like lives is that there's an interaction and a community that really happens more than when you're just recording. So like right now, I am talking to a camera and no one is ask, asking me any questions. So this is a little more hard for me. For some people, this is a lot easier. I want someone to go, how would I garnish this? Could I put time in this? You know, so as I'm doing a class, I may be making a dish and people say, well, I can't have tomatoes. What could I use instead? I don't have any sweet potatoes. Could I use carrots? And so for me, it gives me that same kind of thing to play off of that I would in a live in-person event. And that's very important to me. And also it makes everyone feel like they're here with me. And I think that's super important. Um, it's not that hard to start doing these. And you can do them and you can be, you can record them ahead of time, even on Ecamm if you want. Just like I'm doing right now, I'm actually recording on Ecamm so I can switch these cameras so easily. So if you're not ready to just go live and be there and do all of it, then you could do this. And then you can edit some things out if you want or not. But it's, it's so, so easy to just switch cameras in Ecamm, um, to use your iPhone, to, to do a lot of things. But you do have everything all kind of connected. So let me show you kind of if you're not used to it. So I've got these little boxes over here. Oop, there we go that are connected and I've got my microphone in and all of those things. So if you're using something that's not a Canon camera, you are gonna have to have one of those little um, mini recorders because all that does is take the picture from there and puts it into Ecamm. And Ecamm when it's recording like it is now, 
it's recording whatever camera that I put it to. So I don't have to come back later on and have two different cameras worth of footage that I have to put somewhere and edit both and then splice everything in. All I'm doing is coming over here and going, okay, here's some lemonade, <laughs> right? It's just this easy. And this is the way that I like it. It doesn't take that much effort at all. Um, for me doing something live too, it saves a lot of time. So once you have your camera set up, once you're used to using Ecamm and you have your setup, I can just pop on live whenever I want. And now, I don't know if you guys have watched already, I did um, another talk about live video for the shy and reluctant. So if that's you, maybe you should go take a look because everybody's a little bit lonely right now with the new normal and things like that. And so even just checking in and saying, hey, let's have tea together, right? Or let me show you how I make a homemade frappuccino. Just something that you can give your people that's a little break out of the monotony of possibly their quarantine time is so, so terribly important. And one of the things that I love too, so if I can go on Facebook, I can do these live videos, and then I can send them to YouTube, which I know <laughs> if you're a YouTube person, that's not what you're supposed to do. But I've, I've gotten, you know, like 3,000 subscribers, 2,000 subscribers, something like that, just by kind of parking some of my Facebook videos, getting ready to do YouTube. I can put it on, um, what is it, LinkedIn. I could put it, I can, um, I could edit it or do very, very short ones and share those on my stories. So you could do something here with Ecamm and put it on IGTV, right? Because I'm recording it. I just have to upload it. That's all I have to do. So there are all kinds of things you can do with this content. So when I do an online class, I download that content because I use Podia as my um, class platform. So I download the video, I put it into Podia, and then I'm selling it. And so you've, when I do my classes, you have the option to attend live if the time works for you. If not, you'll be able to come back and watch the recording. Also, people can buy the class after the recording's done. So that's another nice way for me to repurpose that video. And I think that it's kind of important for you to think about, well, what can I do? So for instance, I am doing some videos for my, um, I have a class uh, live video for the shine reluctant. So I'm working with some ladies doing that. So I'm actually going to break down some things and make some shorts for them. Just little short films showing them maybe even screen shares and things like that. So even if you're not an artist, a crafter, a craftsman, or a, a cook, you could still do this for your marketing audience, but instead of having these necessarily an overhead camera, and a, and, you know, you could be using a regular camera or even like we could use this camera and then we could screen share. And so that would be another way that we could do something that would work out really well. So there's, it's really kind of limitless the ways that you could come about this. So the one thing I want you to know and leave here with is A, you can do this. It is not hard. Switching cameras is not hard. It takes less time to learn Ecamm than it does a video editing program and click that button and have me change my cameras around. And you're gonna see all the camera changes that I've done. And again, we can go back and finish out. I can even go in live demo mode and do recordings on how to use Ecamm, right? And we could look at some other things. We could look at other options, pictures and pictures, mics to use. We can see the different cameras. We can share screen, we can add video files in. There's so many, many things that you can do through here. But to me, the best and the most important to know is this changing of the videos, 
right? And it's just effortless. And once you get used to it, you kind of know, okay, I think I can switch there, right? Switch. You can kind of see out of the corner of your eye. Just like down here, when you're doing a recording, you can pause. So I could pause this, go have some lemonade, come back and finish my video. You can finish it. So also, another thing that I find very interesting to do with, especially on Facebook Lives, but this works as well with like Instagram Stories, if you can be really consistent, it's super helpful. So if you could pick a day and time of the week and go live each, each week. So I did Tuesday at one o'clock for like almost two years, I think. And at first it was very uncomfortable and it got more comfortable as I went along. And when you're doing something live, you may not have anyone watching you live. And that's going to be disconcerting. But don't let it be disconcerting. Because the beauty of something like, well, there's a beauty of the quickness that uh, Instagram story is gone. It's 24 hours. You can try that today, right? You can say hello to your audience, give it a go, and let it go. And then it's gone. Well, and with Facebook, you can keep it. It keeps it. It stays. It doesn't magically delete. You can delete it if you want to. But there's a beauty in that, that now I've done that in my Facebook page. Maybe I'll share it in my group. Maybe I'll share it on my personal page. So a lot of times live, I may only have 30 people watching when I'm doing a live. And sometimes it's less. Sometimes I will only have three or four people in the beginning, and then I'll come over and I'll look over and I'll be like, how did that many people get here? Um, but the numbers happen after that. So typically within a day, maybe 500 people to 1,000 people within the week will watch that video. So it's, not, it's okay if no one's there. It doesn't mean that the video wasn't worthwhile. So also, let's say nobody watches your video. Nobody watches my video on Lemonade and nobody shared it and now I just feel like I wasted my time. Well, no, I haven't because I can take that video and I can put it on my blog with a recipe for lemonade. And now I've repurposed that content. And so don't feel like you've done something extra you shouldn't have. You can put it on Instagram. You can, um, if you've made a whole little video, you could put it on IGTV. You could do all different kinds of things with it. So know that whatever you're doing, how you're doing this is gonna work out as content that you will have to help bolster your expertise out in the world. And that's very important. And it's funny to me because I think that changing cameras and being a one person team is not as hard as it is just to start going live. So I'm gonna ask you if you aren't going live regu regularly, <laughs> Go ahead, do it. Make something simple. If you do art, maybe just show me how to make a background color change from dark blue to light blue, right? I don't know how that works. You have to remember, you know stuff your audience doesn't. You may have known how to make a lemonade from scratch, but what if you didn't? What if you didn't know how to make the simple syrup? I could show you how to make simple syrup and it will blow some people's minds who've never seen it before. And it's okay to start with the simple things. Start with things that aren't gonna fluster you, that you feel confident. I felt pretty good about squeezing a lemon, right? There's not a whole lot that can go wrong. There may be some lemon splatters on my computer, but in general, Nothing bad could happen. So it's, if it's your first time using a pressure cooker, that may not be the time to go live. It might be the first time to go live might be, you know, chopping, on, let me, I'm gonna show you how to dice. I'm gonna show you how to chop with a knife without cutting yourself. It can just be whatever that basic thing is. I'm gonna show you how to clean your brushes so that they last longer, right? It can be anything like that. And so it's really kind of awesome. And I think you're going to find that the feedback you get is addictive. 
So it helps me plan what my posts are going to be because someone's going to ask me six questions. Well, could I make that with lime? How would I make um, simple syrup mix for a bar? How could I, you know, so you might end up with one live making something simple, knowing that you have 10 things of content that you can do now, either online, live, or in your blog or in some other manner or both. It's just really, really simple. And I know that I am really grateful for Ecamm existing because I would have never done all this. I'm not super, super techy. It's not like all this stuff was just like magic. I didn't want to be live. I didn't really want to be on camera. But once I started using Ecamm and switching the cameras were so easy, it's just, it's made everything so much more simple. My community has grown a um, hundredfold since I've done live video and I get to communicate with them on a regular basis. And I think you'll find the same thing. So I really can't wait to see what you're gonna do. And if you go live, please do tag me, Kathy Hester on Facebook, and I would love to see what you come up with. And if you have some questions that I can help you with, let me know.